Are you looking for a travel trailer that weighs less than 5,000 pounds GVWR? Well, stick around, folks. You're going to want to check out these awesome floor plans that we found of travel trailers under 5,000 pounds. Hey everybody, Mike with RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we come out with a brand new video. We also invite you to check out our website at rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing there as well. But without any further ado, let's get started on our review of travel trailers that weigh less than 5,000 pounds, GVWR. This travel trailer is the StarCraft Superlight Max model number 16 FBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,830 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,165 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,995 pounds. The hitch weight on it is 440 pounds and it measures in at 20 feet even and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you walk in at the back of the trailer, which is where the kitchen and bathroom areas are located. As it wraps on around, you've got a nice comfy couch here, which also serves as a dinette. And then finally, your bed is located at the front of the camper. Now, when I first walk into this camper, my first impression of it is that it's really rich and luxurious in here. They've done a really nice job using two-tone cabinetry to create a very luxurious feel. Part of the entertainment area and the bedroom cabinets and around the sofa have a darker cabinet color. And then your kitchen cabinets are a lighter wood color. And it really just breaks things up, helps to define the areas, but it gives it a really nice residential look and feel. Now you'll notice just to the left of me here, this is where your refrigerator is located, right inside from the entry door. Now I like this location because you know, if you're outside hanging out by the fire or doing whatever you're doing out there and you want to come in and grab a cold drink or grab something out of the fridge, you don't have to go all the way through the camper. You can just quickly open it up, grab what you need, close the door and you're back outside. It's also convenient from inside the camper, but I will point out that this style of refrigerator that they've used in here is an absorption style refrigerator, which means it runs on shore power or propane. Now we're seeing more and more campers moving away from this style of fridge and over to the 12 volt models because they run on a battery and shore power. Now the big difference between the two is in order to run down the road and keep your fridge cold, you will have to keep your propane on and some people feel that that's a big safety hazard. So you might turn off your propane and then your fridge kind of just becomes a big cooler while you're riding down the road. So as long as you're not traveling too far, that'll be fine. And then you can plug into shore power, turn the propane back on whenever you get to your campsite or your boondock location and you are good to go. But it's a fantastic size fridge and it really works well in this location. Also over here, you'll notice you've got some pantry storage for your kitchen area. There are no shelves in here. There's just one in the middle. So if you want to add additional shelving, you would have to be able to do that on your own because it really just comes with this one fixed shelf. Now the rest of the kitchen is located right across from the fridge and the pantry. Up top here, you've got a very large cabinet with lots of storage space inside. Then you have a convection style microwave oven, which is fantastic. You can both microwave and bake inside of there. It's a great setup. Down below that, we've got a two burner stove. And I really like the fact that they've done the front to back burners here because it takes up less countertop space. So you have a really great amount of countertop space in a smaller camper in here. And then you've got your single bowl sink with a gooseneck faucet overhead and a separate sprayer. Now, I wish they had used a little bit bigger sink in here. This is a really small sink. It would be hard to wash pots and pans and things in here without making a big mess. And the other big change I wish they made is, where's your receptacle if you wanna plug in a coffee pot or a toaster? It's all the way up under the cabinet on this side, which means you'd have to have you know, a pretty long run to be able to get to your coffee pot or toaster. I wish they had the receptacle on this side of the cabinet. It would just make more sense to me that way. Now down below your sink, you've got 
a couple of cabinet doors that open and you've got some storage underneath of there. Finally, you have a really nice big drawer for all of your kitchen utensils. And below that, you have a nice deep drawer for pots and pan storage. Now, the sofa in here is a good size sofa. It can comfortably, comfortably seat three people. It also has some storage underneath, which you can open up each one of these doors and access the storage there. It's got a cup holder located on each end. And on this end of the sofa, it does have a receptacle so you can plug in and charge your computer, telephone, uh, what have you. We also have a nice big uh, window above the sofa and the sofa itself is set into a slide out. Now the slide out only goes out about 16 inches, but it just creates enough extra floor space in here to make it feel nice and roomy and spacious. There's also a couple lights up above. Now the sofa also will jackknife out into another bed. You just grab it and pull it up and roll it right on out. And the bed that, that it turns into is about six feet long and about eh, 42 inches wide. So I would say an average size adult, certainly a couple of small kids could sleep on this sofa very, very easily. Now, more and more, we're seeing travel trailers that have a multifunctional couch here. We've already talked about it being a sofa. You can sit here and watch the entertainment center TV and stuff like that, or you can convert it into a bed. And then its third use is that this is your dinette area because the camper comes with a freestanding dinette table. Now, in my opinion, this table's a little on the short side. It should probably be a little bit longer, uh, but you could get two people at this table somewhat comfortably. It really needs to be a little longer for two people and certainly for three people to be able to eat at this table. But the other nice thing about a freestanding dinette table is you can use it either in here or outside if you wish. So right across from the sofa is where the entertainment center is located. Now, starting from the bottom, you've got a couple of really nice full extension drawers that pull out for storage. And then you've got your TV mounted here and it's just in the perfect spot for this camper. You can see it both from the sofa area and you can see it from your bed. So it's in a great spot. Now this TV also sort of pulls right on out and then you've got a lot of storage behind it to store even more items. So here we are at the very front of this camper and this is where the bed is located. This is an east to west bed setup because it goes side to side. North to south would run this way. Now up top here, you'll notice you've got three cabinet doors with plenty of storage space up there. On each side of the bed, there is a window on either end and so you can open those up and get a nice cross breeze through here. And the bed itself, I don't know, let's see. It looks like it's a pretty good size, but it's about, yeah, about 80 inches long by 55, 56 inches wide. So it would be considered a residential full-size bed. And uh, still, that's a good size because it's 80 inches long. You'll notice at the head of the bed here, you got a little nightstand and you can put things on there like your phone or tablet and they can charge overnight while you're sleeping. There's even a tower of power here that you can use. It's got a couple of receptacles and USB ports. And that tower of power will also work if you're sitting on the sofa and you need to charge things on this end of the sofa. Finally, underneath of the bed, it's got this little storage area here. You could get a couple of bins or totes that you could easily pull out from under here and access all of those items very easily. Now here I am in the bathroom of this camper, which is located in the back of the camper by the entry door and just next to the refrigerator. It's a good size bathroom for a smaller camper and it has a corner style shower in here. And I kind of like this corner style showers. I wish that it had like a glass enclosure for shower doors because otherwise you're stuck using this shower curtain and I'm not a big fan of shower curtains. I feel like you'll get water all over the place. The curtain will stick to you while you're taking a shower. Just just not very convenient. Now, height wise in here, you guys know that I'm 5'11", but standing into the skylight space, we have about six feet, four inches of headroom in here. And the whole entire camper itself has pretty good headroom too. It's got about six feet, six inches of headroom through the entire camper. So for you taller folks, this one might work out for you pretty well. Now, just outside of the shower, you have a medicine cabinet with a built-in shelf inside. Down below, we've got a receptacle on the side, a nice looking countertop and sink, and then storage down below. 
Here I am sitting on the commode in this bathroom, and I'm not going to pass the elbow test on this side, but I will pass it on the other side. But the bathroom's large enough that even with the door closed, you don't feel claustrophobic in here at all. Now, outside of this camper, it doesn't have an outdoor kitchen, but it does have an outdoor refrigerator. So if you want to access some cold beverages, no problem. In the very front of the camper, underneath of the bed inside, you have some pass-through storage. This travel trailer is the Grand Design Imagine AIM, which stands for Adventure in Motion, model number 16ML. Has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,768 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,027 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,795 pounds. The hitch weight is 412 pounds, it measures in at 20 feet even, and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you've got a nice big bed located there. Then we wrap around to your sofa area. Then you wrap into your kitchen. And finally, in the back of this travel trailer, a full width bathroom. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, you walk right into the living and the bedroom area. Now, I know some of you folks don't always like walking in and having your bed right here. The only advantage to it, or one big advantage to it, is that your bed is always made and in place. You don't have to worry about it being a Murphy bed and the covers coming off when it goes up and down and all that stuff. So it's really, I think, in the best location as far as this camper. And as far as the size of it, it's 80 inches by, it's got to be 60 inches. It is. So it's a full residential style queen sized bed in here. You'll also notice that there are a couple of reading lights over top, plus a dome light for even more light. You've got plenty of storage up above that for all of your clothes. There's also a cubby located down here, which has a receptacle, a USB port and a C port. So no matter what kind of device you have, you're gonna be able to charge it up while you're sleeping at night. Just to next to me here is where there's a very large wardrobe closet. It's probably about three feet deep, a couple of drawers down below that, and there's an additional electrical receptacle down below as well. Two more really nice features about the bed area is underneath on the inside of the camper, you've got three cabinets that you can open up, lots of storage under there. And the one is even perfect for shoe storage. And then outside there's pass through storage at the very front that runs all the way under the bed from one side of the camper to the other. So here I am at the sofa, dinette, and extra bed location inside this RV. And I love the fact that it's multifunctional, right? You can use this area for three different uses. I also like the fact that it's in a slide out. So it does give you just a little bit more floor space inside of here. And it does feel a little bigger that way. Now this has a freestanding table that you can fold up and put away, or you can also even use it outside if you'd like, but it gives you a lot of versatility. Uh, this is your dinette table when you want to sit here and have a meal. When you're not having a meal, you can put the table away or do whatever you'd like and just use it as a sofa. And then finally, Grand Design does a nice job with their easy rollout sofa and this becomes a spot for a third person to sleep. Now it's not really big, it's about 42 inches wide, but it's only about, gosh, a little less than 60 inches long. So, you know, a, a kid could sleep here pretty comfortably and be fine. Um, but one other thing to note about the sofa is that it does have this fold down piece in the center. You got a couple of cup holders in here so you can relax and sit here and watch TV, which is located directly across from the sofa. One more really nice feature about this sofa is that it has two very large drawers underneath for even more storage space. So here I am in the kitchen area, and as I mentioned, the TV is directly across from the sofa, so it's in a perfect location. You could also lay in bed and very easily see the TV from there as well. Now this is what we would call an L-shaped kitchen, and what I mean by that is that it just goes along and makes an L, and then across from that is where your refrigerator is located. Now starting up top, we talked about the TV already. It's even got some open storage underneath. You could put your remotes and things up there so you don't lose them. Then you have a lot of really large storage cabinets overhead. And then we wrap on around to where the kitchen sink is located. Now this is a really neat sink setup. It's a big round bowl but the faucet actually folds up or down and you can close the lid and have even more countertop space in here. As we wrap on around, we've got a two burner stove in here with 
a microwave convection oven underneath. And then there's plenty of drawer space in here for all of your kitchen utensils and also your pots and pans. Now the refrigerator is located right across from the kitchen sink and before we go into the bathroom, we'll take a look at that last. You've got a very, very large storage cabinet over top of the fridge. It's probably two feet by two feet. The refrigerator itself opens right up, good amount of space in there. And then it has a pull out drawer for the freezer down below. Now the bathroom in here is located all the way in the back of the camper and it extends from side to side. So it's a very good size bathroom for a smaller camper. Now I'm standing in the shower like I usually am and the headroom in here is, gosh, that's about six feet, six inches of headroom inside the shower. So that's really a good amount of space in here. You'll also notice that it's got three shelves or corner shelves, I should say, where you can put your soap and shampoo. It's got a detachable wand. And finally, it's got a retractable shower door so you don't have a curtain blowing in on you. Now here I am on the other side of the bathroom and Susan standing in the shower. So everybody say hi to Susan, there she is. Uh, you'll notice up here, there's a very large medicine cabinet with a mirror door and then the other half is just for storage. This cabinet is about 12 inches deep, by the way, so plenty of storage space up top. You'll also notice that there's a very large countertop here around your vanity sink. And then there's also a couple of drawers down below for even more storage. So here I am on the commode. And even when this pocket door is in the closed position, there is plenty of elbow room and it fully passes the test. Finally outside, there's a pull out griddle with a quick connect propane connection down below so you can do all your outside cooking. This travel trailer is the Forest River Surveyor Legend, model number 19 MDBLE. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,081 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 770 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,851 pounds. The hitch weight on this trailer is 470 pounds. It measures in at 23 feet, seven inches long, and it can sleep up to seven people. When you first walk into this camper on the right hand side, you've got your sofa and Murphy bed. Or as we wrap on around, you've got your dinette and then kitchen area. Behind me to my left is the bathroom and to my right are the bunks. So when you first walk into this travel trailer, the first thing I notice is there's a really good amount of floor space in here. That's because the dinette is located in a slide out that's about three feet deep. So it creates a very open and spacious feeling in here. Now, just to the right hand side is where your sofa and Murphy bed are located. And first of all, if you're sitting here as using and using this as a sofa, I think it's a very, very comfortable setup. You can relax. You've got a nice big end table on each side complete with a cup holder and then on each side of the end tables are receptacles and usb ports and there's even really large drawers underneath of the sofa for plenty of storage speaking of storage just above the sofa and the bed location is this bank of cabinets now it's totally open from one end to the other which means if you store things up here you probably want to put them in bins because that way they won't go flying all around while you're driving up and down the road another really nice feature to these doors is they're on sort of a um, spring-loaded hinge so they'll stay in the upright position every now and then we come across a travel trailer where these doors don't stay up they just flop back Back down so you have to hold them up while you're accessing things but this is a very convenient feature to have for these cabinets now the Murphy bed setup is really easy to use first thing you do is just jackknife your sofa out pull the d-ring on the side and this platform drops down and then your mattress drops down as well and this will allow you to sleep I guess east to west in here rather than north to south um, one disadvantage to this kind of a setup is if the person sleeping towards the front of the camper has to get out of bed in the middle of the night, they're going to have to interrupt their partner a little bit. But hey, in a camper this size, it works really, really well. It's There's kind also... of interesting to note that the sofa comes out a little further than the bed, which is It's not pretty usual. unusual. <laughs> yeah, we usually don't see that as well. Normally because the beds are turned the other way, so you can get out from each side. But I think if they did that in here... You know, it would stick out into the room too far. Now this bed is, oh gosh, about 80 inches and it's 60 inches wide. So that makes it a full residential queen size bed in here. So that's a nice feature. But if this, if this stuck out 80 inches into the room, 
it would come all the way out to here. And so that's why they turn the bed east-west instead of north and south. Um, one other thing to note in here is there's a nice big window up front. And then of course you have a side window so you can get a little bit of ventilation in here as well. There are no lights under here. I kind of wish there were, but that's okay. You've got these lights for reading and they can turn on and off independently. So you can sort of set the lighting the way you'd like it. So here I am sitting at the dinette in here and this is a good size dinette. I mean, if I was sitting in here and somebody was sitting next to me, I think we'd have plenty of room to get along while we're eating dinner. Uh, so I would say you could sit four people pretty comfortably at this dinette table. It's also got this really nice light fixture above, so it adds a little bit of luxury to it. And then it's got this just gigantic window over top of your dinette, which I love having a window by the dinette. Now, underneath of both of these dinette seats, there's also storage space that's accessible you kind of have to just remove the cushions and then there's a piece of plywood. It's got a, a little hinge that pops up. The door stays open while you access anything that you need that you have stored under your dinette booth benches. Now, in addition to that, this table will drop down and this can become another bed. And if you do that, you would have a bed that's about, wow, this is 72 inches by about 40 inches wide. So an average height adult or a kid or two could sleep here pretty comfortably. Now, one thing about this dinette table is that it does have these legs on the bottom of it. And more and more though, we're seeing legless dinette tables. So when you have these legs under here, I don't know about you, but I find them in the way all the time. I kick them, I hit them, I smash my shins on them. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. We had a dinette with legs in our Class C RV and it was pretty inconvenient. Our new Class A RV has a legless dinette table which is very convenient. So just something to think about when you're looking at a camper and if this is going to be a problem for you or not. You're at least aware of it now that you know about it. And then one other thing about this dinette is it has the step up. We see this very often in smaller trailers that have a dinette in a slide out. There is somewhat of a step up. Now this one isn't that big. It's only about eight inches. We've seen them as high as 12. And in my opinion, that's too big of a step up, but an eight inch step is really pretty normal because most steps have eight inch risers anyway. So you're kind of used to that height. And one other thing to note about this dinette is there are no electric outlets around the dinette or under the dinette at all. In my opinion, that's a little bit inconvenient. I don't know about you, but this is where Susan and I would sit. We might have our laptops open, whether we're working or just, you know, looking for places to go and explore around the campground. Uh, and you might need to plug in your laptop when you're doing that. And there are no receptacles here at all. It's not that uncommon because in most slide outs, you won't find receptacles in the walls, but normally they'll put a receptacle like under the dinette booth somewhere, and they did not do that in here for some reason. Now, here I am at the kitchen, which is right across from the dinette, and this is what we would call an inline kitchen, right? All of your kitchen appliances and sink and everything are just in a line. It's a very efficient and uh, well set up kitchen design. Now, up top here, you've got a couple of really nice cabinet doors with glass inlays, and then there's a big storage area up there. Just below that, we've got our lighted range hood, you have a nice sized single bowl sink here with a big gooseneck faucet overhead. Now right next to the kitchen sink is where the two burner cooktop is located. They've positioned these burners so it's one in front of the other and that allows for a little bit of countertop space between the burners and the sink. They also took the cutting board and they have a little hanging hanger here for it. Uh, someone in one of our videos recently just said, hey, there's a cutting board in there. Is there a way to hang it up? Well, in this RV there is, and we're seeing that more and more often now where the manufacturers have a spot. Now, very often this cutting board is the same size as the sink, and you can use it as a sink cover to create even more countertop space. But in this case, this is a little larger than the sink, so it won't fit in there. One other thing to note, is that there's no real backsplash around your burners in here. So if you cook bacon or something that's gonna splatter, this cabinet could be at risk of getting, you know, delaminated over time from grease getting on there. So if you do end up buying a travel trailer like this, just be aware 
of that and you might need to buy you know um, some peel and stick tile or something really simple at Home Depot and put it here and create a little backsplash both on the side and behind your burners just to keep your camper from you know damage from any splatter that comes from cooking now just below the cooktop we have a microwave down here and that's great if you have little kids that are cooking food for me it's a little it's a little low but hey it is what it is and then you've got a fully extendable drawer for all of your kitchen utensils and then the fullest extension full extension drawer i've ever seen in my life <laughs> now this drawer is shorter and that's because of the kitchen you know the kitchen sink pipes that are under there i just thought it was funny that this thing pulled out as far as it does there's also a central vac down below so you can easily sweep up the floor and whisk your crumbs away finally we get to the refrigerator in here and this is a very good size refrigerator for this size of a camper really for any camper this is a good size fridge it's got a nice deep freezer up top big refrigerator down below it is a 12 volt refrigerator we are just not seeing any new campers anymore that are propane powered the old absorption style refrigerators but these are fantastic they're efficient they chill much quicker i know with our absorption style fridge we had to get it cold like for 12 hours overnight before it was cold enough to put our food into it with a compression style or a compressor style refrigerator it's cold in three hours or four hours now just across from the refrigerator is where the tv is mounted in here and this is a great spot for the tv you can easily see it from the couch or your bed in the evening and you can even see it from one side of the dinette and you can also pull it out and swivel it around a little bit so it's in a fantastic spot now the double bunks in this camper are extra wide, which is a great feature. So you, they're actually considered double, double bunks. Um, and so they are about 74 inches by 44 inches wide. So a very good size bunk bed up here. You could easily sleep one person up here and definitely two smaller kids. Um, they don't list the weight on these bunks anywhere that I can see, so I don't know what the weight capacity on them is. You'd have to look that up on the, on the manufacturer's website if it's even listed there. But these bunks do have most of the main things that we look for to make a bunk bed comfortable. They've got a window, they each have their own light, and they both have their own USB ports. So if the kids are in here and they've got their tablets, phones, whatever, uh, they'll be nice and comfy and be able to plug in and keep things charged up. They don't have electrical receptacles, but they do have USBs, so that should be enough. Now, one other thing to note on a bunk bed setup like this, where you only have access to the corner, is how the ladder works. So, if one kid's up top and he uses the ladder to get up there, now the kid that's going to sleep on the bottom has to move the ladder out of the way to get in. I know if I had little brothers, I would torture the heck out of them and put this in place so they'd be trapped under here. But it is just something to think about with these corner style bunk setups. And that is what do you do with the ladder to let the kids on the bottom bunk get in and out. Now one other final feature with these bunks is there is additional storage under the bottom bunk space. So that's a great feature because as you know in a travel trailer storage is so important. So here I am in the bathroom in this travel trailer and I gotta say this is a really really big bathroom for a camper that's under 25 feet long. I mean it's it is terrific. So standing in the shower, as you guys know, I'm 5'11". Let's do our height check in here. I say we have a total of, gosh, six feet, five inches into the skylight. And the whole entire camper itself, ceiling height comes in at about six feet, eight inches. So a good amount of ceiling height in this camper overall. You'll also notice in here that uh, there's a four shelves in here for shampoo and soap and it's got a retractable shower door i think of all the campers we've been in there are very very few that use shower curtains anymore more and more are going to the retractable shower door and i would like to personally claim full responsibility <laughs> <laughs> you're taking credit for that full one? credit for this change that's <laughs> happened in all these travel trailers <laughs> Anyway, it's a decent sized shower. It's not really very deep, 
but uh, you could stand a little sideways in here. Your sprayer is always removable, so you can make it work. You'd be very comfortable in a shower in here. Now, Susan's standing in the shower, and I'm at the other end of the bathroom. And as you can see, we have a nice-sized medicine cabinet. It's even got a little shelf in here, so you can put all your toothbrushes in there, and they'll, they'll hang down below the cabinet. You've got an okay-sized countertop with a nice, deep sink in here. You've also got an electrical receptacle right here. And then, of course, all your tank controls are here in the bathroom as well, so that's a convenient location for them. Down below your sink, you have additional storage under here and i also want to point out your toilet paper holders on the side of this cabinet and then it even has a couple of hooks up here to hang your towels finally here i am sitting on the commode and this bathroom passes the elbow test with flying colors let us know which one of these travel trailers you like the most and why in the comments down below we love reading everyone's comments and responding to them it's a whole lot of fun and it always surprises us what features people like the most. But if you want to see even more trailers under 5,000 pounds, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.